Hey, it's Gunsmith Beard back with another gun video, and it's really good to see you guys. I've had a busy week starting a new job, and so it's good to sit down and just talk guns with you guys. First off, thank you for all the subs we got this week. A lot of new people are joining the channel, and I wanted to first welcome you guys. If you're new, I uh, hope you really enjoy the channel and enjoy the conversations that we're going to have together. Um, if you're a returning subscriber, thank you. Uh, I know that I've kind of picked on you guys a little bit about a lot of people were actually watching the videos every week, but they weren't subscribed. So make sure you do subscribe to the channel. It helps us grow. It helps more people have the opportunity to join our community and talk about guns without um, any kind of prejudice or uh, narcissistic you know, uh, behavior that you would find at a lot of gun shops. I don't know how many gun shops I've walked into and they were so snooty and narcissistic that you're like, dude, I'm just trying to learn, you know? And everybody starts from somewhere. No one is really an expert. We're always students, we're always learning each day. So just be nice. Like, and that's kind of what my expectations for the comments in my channel is just keep it civil you know be nice and we'll all have a good time so but you guys do i'm not saying you don't but there we've always there's always going to be a few bad apples but anyway thank you to my channel supporters which are brownells swamp fox optics shooter innovations and gritter gear those four companies have been a godsend to support the channel and help it grow so i'm always grateful so i always want to give them a plug and say thank you um the gun of the week, like I said, if you watched the last video last week, you know what's coming. Um, it's uh, a really nice 1911. Let's take a close look at the gun of the week and then we'll come back and talk about it. So I will see you in just a second. Hey guys and girls, welcome back. So we're gonna talk about the Springfield DS or double stacked 1911 Prodigy. And this is the shorter one, which is the 4.25 commander size, not the full size five inch version. And so this thing is chalked with a lot of features. But first and foremost, let's check and make sure it's clear. I have no rounds in my magazine. And also there's no round in the chamber. So my weapon is clear. So if I point this at the camera, there's nobody behind the camera, it's just a tripod. So anyway, uh, one of the first things I noticed is this honking barrel. This thing is huge. It's a big old bull target barrel, match grade, uh, forged stainless steel, and it has this weird taper on it. Well, the reason it has this taper on it, so you can kind of see the taper that I'm talking about, is if you look at the front, there's no barrel bushing. So that taper on the barrel works as a barrel bushing. So it kind of aligns everything back up. So the slide goes into lockup and it kind of funnels it into uh, the correct direction, making everything lock up nice and clean and tight. So I was like, oh, that's really good machine work and craftsmanship. Um, and it's just a big honking nine millimeter, one by 16 twist, just big old barrel. Um, and so really good craftsmanship, really liked it. So as far as the slide, it does have serrations on the front. If you want to press check or all the snazzy mall ninja stuff you want to do, uh, you can do that with the front serrations. It does have back serrations. If you want to rack it, um, a little bit old school. So the craftsmanship on it is really nice. So the slide and frame are forged carbon steel that has been black 
uh, Cerakoted, uh, heat treated. Um, it's a heat treated paint. So they paint it on and then they put it in the oven at 300 degrees for about 90 minutes and it bakes that paint into the metal and it makes it super, super durable. So if you're not familiar with Cerakote, it is actually a really good product as long as you get the better higher end paint. Uh, they do have some air dry stuff that in my opinion is not the best, uh, especially compared to like bake on finishes. They just last longer, they're more durable. So <clears throat> the sights. Because I'm running the Leopold Delta Point Pro, um, it kind of makes my sights useless unless I go with like suppressor height sights. As you can see, my rear sight, which is a U-notch, is completely obstructed by the optic and the optic plate, which kind of sucks. The front sight is a fiber and green. So it's a fiber rod that is great during the day because that rod picks up light and it gets brighter and it makes it easier to get that front sight picture, cleaner front sight picture. So the recoil system is, uh, I'll kind of explain that a little bit better. So in the original 1911s, there's what we called as a standard rod, which is a short little uh, guide rod. Then people wanted higher end parts so they had a one piece, which was a solid piece of steel. Then they had a two piece one piece, which was basically the same length as a one piece, but it threaded or it was two pieces that threaded together. And that's what this thing has. Makes it just easier to take apart, allegedly. Next is the magazines. So uh, you get uh, a flush magazine and you also get a couple 21s. So this is the 17 round magazine and it does fit nice and flush into the magwell. It is a double stacked, so you get 17 rounds of nine millimeter in the flush magazine. But if that's not enough uh, capacity and you are in a state that allows it, you can get a 21 round uh, magazine. And if that's not enough, you can always get a 26 round magazine. And if you don't like the Springfield Duramags, you can go to Atlas Gunworks and get their magazines. Um, they can help you find the correct one because there's a couple different kinds, but they can help you find the correct one and you can get those. But again, just these are $60 a pop, no matter if you get the 17, 21, or 26, they're all 60 bucks. So again, when you get into 1911s and 2011s, their magazines are stupid expensive. So it's just kind of one of the things when you play into the more expensive firearms, you gotta pay the piper for good magazines. This is heavy, no shock there that something with a bull barrel and a steel frame and slide and all that stuff would be heavy. It comes in at about 32.5 ounces, so it is heavy. The overall length is about 7.8 inches and the height is about 5.5 inches. So it's still a pretty compact gun. It's very heavy. So I'm not sure that you would want to carry it in the waistband style. I mean, some people do that with heavy guns, but I just don't think they're super comfortable for long carries. Uh, for outside the waist, 100% or duty weapon, this would be absolutely superb. I think the quality of this is really, really nice. Um, the DS, obviously we talked about this in the beginning of the video, means double stacked, which means instead of having your old 1911 single stack, you get the much wider double stack magazines that also gives you a lot more capacity. The next biggest thing that they designed is their optics ready system. And so Springfield calls theirs the AOS, which means agency optic system and no surprise it kind of sounds like a ripoff of glock's mos system um and to be honest it kind of is so what it is is basically they have a generic optics cut that utilizes their proprietary plates and there are six plates with six different footprints for optics so for example if you have a certain optic like an rmr then you can look and see if um, you have the right plate, which, um, spoiler alert, if you want an RMR style 
Optic, you can run their A14B plate. Or if you're like, no, I already have some of those. I kind of want to try this Leopold Delta Point Pro that uh, Gunsmith Beard has. Um, you can try the A15B plate. And like I said, there's six plates. There's all kind of different footprints. So there's a lot of options for optics if you want to run optics. You don't have to, but if you're going to, they did give you a good amount of uh, choice there. Um, some of the features that you would kind of expect would be on here is the railed, accessory railed amount, a flashlight or weapon light. You do get the skeletonized trigger, which is, I think there's better triggers out there, so I might end up replacing that. There's a skeletonized hammer, there's the nice beaver tail, and then there's the ambidextrous thumb safety. So you get a lot of the expected features out of this um, pistol. Um, but the biggest thing I like is this grip module that's down here. It kind of flares out on the bottom, so it kind of get, pushes your hand up into your beaver tail. And the texture is really nice. It's very grippy. Um, it kind of has that sandpaperish feel. Um, it has the underbelly cut here that's smooth, and then also the underbelly cut on the trigger guard too, which is really nice. And it feels really good. Um, when I was shooting it, it was very comfortable and, and really easy to shoot. It's very well balanced for the weight, which is really impressive. Uh, my best friend shot it and he kept saying he loved the weight. He loved how it felt in the hand. It didn't feel nose heavy or back heavy or any of that. It felt really, really good in the hand. But <laughs> we're gonna jump right into this one. Um, the first time we shot this thing, um, it, performed terribly and the reliability was terrible. So I'm gonna kind of explain what happened. Uh, we had tons of nine millimeter ammo from different manufacturers, different grain weights, and also different velocities. So I'm 100% sure that it was not the ammo. What it was is the very anemic recoil spring that they put in the slide because it's at 12 pounds. And you would think that that would be sufficient but they also wanted to cut the weight down to make it a little easier to rack, especially for um, guys that have uh, arthritic hands or uh, they were injured or had um, broken hands at one point or whatever. So there was some disability uh, with their hand strength or just because like me, I've broken about every finger um, fighting and doing martial arts as a kid. Um, I've done a lot of damage to my hands issues and this seems to be a bigger issue with this gun is they tried to go too light on the recoil spring the main spring is actually uh 23 pounds if i'm not mistaken uh the recoil spring is 12 so if i jumped up and pounded to a 14 it should alleviate the problem so what was happening when i was shooting and again i do apologize for the crows but when i was shooting i would shoot one two three and then my slide would not be in battery. So my gun looked like that. And it was not a feeding issue. It was not a failure to eject. It just was out of battery. And so I would tap the back of the slide and then I would shoot one, two, three, sometimes four rounds and it would do it again. And after doing several mags and it did it almost relentlessly, um, I realized the spring is way too light. I could stiffen the spring up, giving a little bit more push, and it would fix this problem and give me back the reliability. To be honest, that this should this thing should have had from the factory. I shouldn't have to fix a factory gun, especially one this expensive. Um, but again, it is what it is. I know how to fix it. And the fun part is we can do a video on it as like a part two um of me actually fixing that recoil spring and it's not hard so pretty easy fix pretty cheap fix so we'll do that it'll be fun so you guys can see how you fix it but anyway this is the springfield ds 1911 prodigy the short one and i hope you guys like this video i will always catch you in the next video and just remember work hard god first see ya